and welcome to this Ferros Designer screencast with me, Simon Hicks. I'm going to show you how you can use RS-232 to allow third-party devices to interface with Ferros controllers. The key is to understand that Ferros controllers can listen and respond to any RS-232 protocol, so there's no predetermined protocol that must be used. Often the third-party device can also be configured to transmit and receive whatever you want. Let's say you have a touchscreen with some buttons that should activate timelines. The touchscreen outputs RS-232 data whenever a button is pressed. So in the trigger view, add an RS-232 input trigger to receive the data. And start by adding a typical string that's sent by the touchscreen in response to a button press. So preset A001 and then the carriage return which is backslash R and the new line which is backslash N. You can see the hex values for these characters by changing the string type to hex in the drop down box. So carriage return is 0D and a new line is 0A. I'll continue to work in ASCII for this example. Now, identify the value in the string that will change for each button on the touchscreen. In this case, it's the preset number. So I'm going to modify the string so that this value is captured as a variable. I'll delete the number and insert a pair of angle brackets where the number was. This is part of the Faros syntax for capturing variables. The Faros variable code for a decimal number is D, so I'll put a D inside the angle brackets. For the touchscreen in this example, it's always a three-digit decimal number, so I need to specify this by typing a 3 before the D. Adding the syntax to the RS-232 string has two advantages. The trigger will now fire whatever the preset number is, and the value will be stored as a variable for use in the trigger action. Suppose A in the input string is also useful to you, or perhaps you don't care what character it is. Either way, you should capture it. This time, you want to capture a single ASCII character, for which the Faros variable code is C. So, put angle brackets where the A was, and put a C between them. Variables captured from an RS-232 input trigger will be stored in the order they're received. So the character will be stored as variable 1, and the preset number will be stored as variable 2. So now you can create a start timeline action and set the variable index to 2 to use the preset number to start the timeline corresponding to the same number as the button that was pressed on the touchscreen. Don't forget that you can have a look at the Faros Designer Help for full details on how the RS-232 input trigger can be configured to capture variables. Thanks for watching.